నమస్కారం సో ఐఎమ్ బ్యాక్ ఫ్రమ్ మై ట్రిప్ ఫర్ దోస్ ఆఫ్ యూ హ్యావ్ బిన్ ఫాలోయింగ్ మై పాడ్కాస్ట్ రెగ్యులర్లీ ఐ హ్యాడ్ స్పెండ్ మై బర్త్డే వీకెండ్ ఇన్ మురుడేశ్వర్ అండ్ ఐ హ్యాడ్ బేసిక్లీ ట్రావెల్డ్ అప్ అండ్ డౌన్ ద కరావ్లీ కోస్ట్ ఆల్ ద వే నార్త్ టిల్ కార్వార్ and uh, i got i got some i got some really good reviews on the last video that i posted uh, it was detailing out the legend of murdeshwara and uh, the tussle of ramayana with his quest for immortality um, um how the how the gods had to finally collude to uh, restore balance so to speak and how shiva being shiva well sometimes he just doesn't care when he gives his boons to rakshasas so um i i got some very um, i i got some interesting questions but there was a common strain that ran through all of them right and uh, basically what they were asking was how do you know this that's it how do you know this now i'll be honest i haven't read the entire canon of the ramayana it's it's a huge it's a huge epic but i have read some significant parts that's for sure but largely my source of information have always been uh, some articles some essays by some renowned playwrights here and there and well wikipedia so i especially when it comes to these kind of tidbits uh, these kind of small little mini myths that are tucked away in the large uh, in, in the large larger canons or the legends of a myth like ramayana right you have to rely for these kind of obscure sources so i was a little i was a little uh, perplexed and i was a little curious and i wondered why is that but that may be because you know the storytelling function is something that is very much at stake right now in india now what do i mean by this term storytelling function i think the best way to, exa- uh, to explain this would be with an example and that that example would probably be uh, the bengali version of the adda or the chai pe charcha if you will now what what happens there is uh, when there is a congregation of humans they start talking right and they start relaying their stories essentially even if it is the charcha about common affairs or current affairs essentially what you're doing is you're relaying myths and myths are nothing but pieces of information that stick around and bind a culture over time so that is basically what 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 is at the heart of the storytelling function now if you look at our, our rich history of epics their itihasas their traditions and all the other uh, insane amounts of literature from the dif- different cultures from different parts of the country you will know that they were handed down through through generations through the oral traditions so at it at a very core storytelling really hits a nerve okay storytelling is where it's at if you want to convey a certain message an example would be like just 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 juxtapose the ads that are the ad campaigns that are run in india with something that is probably run in the west you will know that ads without a message no matter what kind of a brand if, if there is no message if there is no storytelling involved chances are it's is really not going to pick up much steam in india that's just how we consume information storytelling now when i went to murudeshwar on the other hand i realized that the storytelling function is probably dying in india now this is this is just a one off example of mine but i think intuitively i know that there is something at stake here because i'll tell you why for a culture like ours with with such a rich history of oral tradition behind us something that permeates through even the written form once it is actually tabulated if you look at any of our public spaces like um, renowned public spaces like temples for instance where there's a huge conglomeration or a, or a congregation of pilgrims and devotees with a single mind you will know that storytelling is at stake because there there is a sheer lack of signages and boards detailing out any facts with respect to that particular with respect to uh, that particular site or the artifacts in that particular site now unless it is it is an ancient site that has been recognized by the archaeological society of india um, or if it is a unesco site like say uh, hampi you you would be hard pressed to find any kind of signages anywhere in any public space in india and that's and that, that's that's pretty sad when i went to murdeshwar for instance i was looking for signages and boards detailing out the very story that i actually spoke about in my last podcast i couldn't find anything and you know what when i looked around the throngs of devotees and i looked at them 
I realized that maybe it doesn't really matter because they don't know. They don't know the stories or they don't know how to consume storytelling anymore. Because with the advent of this hyper age of information through technology, I think the way we consume storytelling is is completely different now. And if you look at all our public spaces, they they just don't have anything detailing out these myths and legends. It's extremely sad. I will need one more anecdote. Okay, on this particular trip, I actually uh, ran all the way uh, along the coast north northwards of Murdeshwar. The point was to reach the the ending point of the curve of the coast because it curved in a weird way. I want to reach the ending point because I could see spray from a distance. It it it, it probably was a lovely scene that's what i told myself as i ran through the heat it really was totally worth it when i when i reached the end of that coast i found a temple um like situated some 50 50 feet up i had to just trek through some rough grass and i reached a temple right in the middle of nowhere okay this is literally the end of the world because it's it's like a tip and from from the temple if you just walk further walk further along towards the edge of the precipice you can see nothing but the ocean and there's just light spray around and the waves are crashing against the rocks below fantastic location in the middle of nowhere there is a mahabaleshwara uh, mandir okay now when you enter that temple you find that there when you enter the compound you find that there there is a, a hut in which the pujari stays you enter the main temple you approach the temple sanctum sanctorum you will see uh, an image of shankaracharya now that particular image of this patron saint was very different to one that I'm generally used to. So I got a little confused. I was like, maybe this is Madhvacharya. I'm not really sure. So I thought I'll ask the Pujari. So I asked him, who is this? And he said, Shankaracharya. He mumbled Shankaracharya and he walked away. And he walked away and he pretended, I would like to think that he pretended to be keep himself busy by you know arranging the garlands and setting it up for the Aarti. There were a lot of... Uh, quotes from the, the Rig Veda and the Puranas around me. They were all in Kannada so I couldn't read them and I was I think I had I had my mannerism showed that I was going to ask more questions and he ran away from me. Now I'm not sure if I imagined it but intuitively I realized that maybe he didn't have the requisite knowledge for the kind of questions I was going to ask and it was extremely sad. Why can't the trustees of these kind of temples or big temples like Murudeshwara actually install signages and boards. I remember when I went to Ajmer Sharif, the walk to the actual Dargah, I was just on my phone desperately looking up for facts on Wikipedia because there was I was hard pressed to find anything, any signages, any hint of any kind of information, any kind of uh, a myth or a story to relay the, the legend behind that particular place that we're visiting. I mean, what are we visiting others? We don't know. It's extremely sad. And uh, I guess that is what I mean when I say that the storytelling function is at stake. The only way we can probably restore the magic of our ancient traditions and our myths if we, is if we were uh, able to or if we are able to allow them to permeate our public spaces much better. And when I say public spaces, I mean temples, I mean places of worship like, like churches, like dargahs, like mosques, like chistis. And many other uh, historically or cultural relevant sites, they need to be out there. There's another way of uh, actually relaying the storytelling function or relaying uh, legends. It's through work of art. They need to invade our public spaces a lot more. You know why? Because if you go out anywhere today and you were to actually look around the public spaces, what do you see? You see boards. Sure. You see signages. Sure. About what? Empty ads. Nothing else, just ads. Imagine, imagine if you were to approach a temple and then there were signages and signages, rows of signages with little tidbits and informations. If you were able to commercialize our vast legends, allow them to invade our public space, maybe, just maybe, we can allow them to invade public imagination as well. And in some ways, our storytelling function will be restored. That's just my two cents. All right. Um, that's not to say I didn't have a great time along the Karavali coast. To anyone who would love to slum it, slum it out on a travel like the way I do, I would highly recommend it. But just think about it. Next time you ever enter a public place, okay, 
Look around for myths and legends, signages and boards. You'll be hard pressed to find any and think about what I just said. If you want storytelling function to be preserved and they, you want them to be part of public imagination, they need to first invade our physical space. That's just my two cents again. Until next time, peace.